I'm going to start a tutorial here that's going to show how to make furniture from beginning to end and I'm going to use some poly modeling tools and hopefully get into some UVW unwrapping for the materials um, basically do everything you do need to do to make a really high quality 3D model of uh, any piece of furniture you want so what I'm going to start with is just the actual piece of furniture so I went on the website Design Within Reach. Uh, they have a lot of good modern furniture here with good pictures. Um, and I'm actually not going to take the time to uh, to download all these pictures and crop them and get them into Max with all the right sizes because I, I don't really need that. Um, I guess if that does help you then you can do that uh, by just print screening these and putting them in there, getting them all the right size and lining them all up as if you were using CAD or something but uh, what I'm going to do is just take these dimensions that it gives right here uh, make a basic cube that's these dimensions and then I'm just going to by eye look at this chair and see what I need to do so let's get started here uh, I need to make a, a box that is 33 by 35 and then 31 inches tall Here's my rectangle in 3D Studio Max. It's uh, 35 inches wide by 33 inches, or 30, oh, I don't remember what I said. Um, anyway, it's the proper dimensions. Um, and then I need to uh, extrude that up 31 inches. And that'll give me just a basic um, basic cube to construct my to base my uh, my piece of furniture on. So there's the basic shape. Now what I'm going to do with this is probably just maybe we can make um, one go off this way and one go off this way. Um, I really, those are really just for reference in my size. Um, actually, I want, I want to keep one there too. So we'll use this to start building our. Uh, let's look at the piece of furniture real quick. This is, this is what it is. Just a nice little living room lounge chair kind of thing. Um, pretty simple geometry really, but it'll give you the basic building blocks for how to make any kind of furniture. Um, so a couple different views here. 14tunately this one's pretty boxy, which makes it easier to build obviously in 3D. So I'll be referencing these images a lot. Um, in fact, just look one more time. okay, so, trying to figure out, the, an important part before you start a piece of furniture is to really figure out and uh, strategize how you're gonna how you're gonna do this um, because sometimes with edit poly modeling there's not much uh, not much forgiveness if you mess up so I would save often um, but also plan beforehand how you're gonna what, what you think the best way to attack this is gonna be what I'm going to do is probably just move this up a little bit to make space for the legs below and then take down that extrusion some and this will be the basic starting point for my chair and obviously we can go back and change this stuff a little bit later but um, right now I'm going to convert this to a edit poly if my computer responds Okay, I converted this to an edit poly, and then uh, I think what I will do for this one is just start connecting edges. So what I did was select all the edges going in that direction, and then connect. Um, we want to connect it twice and slide it out towards the edges, and those are going to be the basis for our arms coming up. Um, and if we swipe this way and 
uh, grab all these edges going in this direction, connect it once, this will be, and then instead of uh, pinching it, we're going to slide it to the back, like that, apply it. Now we have the basic building blocks for our, our back is going to be here, and our arm nurse are going to be here. So looking at this chair, I can see that the armrests are going to get extruded to this point here with the back, but then the back uh, will continue on on its own a little bit higher up. So let's do that in max. What we'll do is just select these faces. Extrude it up a bit until it looks about right. Then grab this for the back. Extrude a little more. Um, and if you noticed in the pictures, these these faces are going to be kind of angled out like this. And right now I'm obviously just eyeballing it, so... Um, and let's check our size here. Looks like we actually want to go a little higher. Um, and as we're going along, I'll, since I'm not using any reference geometry or reference images. I'll have to eyeball it several times throughout the process to get it right. Um, the problem with reference images is they're never they're never straight on view so the perspective is always a little bit whacked out anyway. Um, but you know, like I said, you can use them or you or you can not you choose not to use them. Either way, it will it can work. Um, so that's looking about right. Uh, let's look at this front view again. Okay, okay, I think that's pretty good. Um, one of the hard parts here is going to be this these little seams going on in here, so we'll get to that later. And then these little uh, pins in the cushion back here, those are going to be a little bit difficult, but hopefully we can work that all out. Okay, um, I think at this point we can actually just delete these references because we know that we're at the right height and the right width and the right depth for this chair. So the rest will just kind of eyeball. We know where the ground plane is going to be at so we'll take the legs to there but other than that we've got the size about right. Um, I think what I'll do next and I'm just kind of figuring this out as I go because like I said each piece of furniture you kind of have to um, figure out the best way to do it. There's a million different ways to do this, obviously. Um, I'm going to keep going with the way I've planned and hope that it works. Uh, so what I'm doing there is just connecting. Um, connecting three times because we have three um, pins that are going to go in the back of the chair here. Um, so this is dividing it up into into those areas that you can see see here. So there's four separate areas here, and uh, so we've got that one, two, three, four, and on those intersections where those uh, those little buttons are going to go. So we'll apply that. And remember, when you're doing this, you need to you need to make uh, loops that go all the way around. So you can see that. In the back, uh, it's connected back there too, and on the bottom, it's also connected. Because if you just end it right there, it's going to mess up, mess up when you try to turbo smooth or or uh, do any smoothing on this thing. So when I say we need to plan ahead, we need to keep in mind that these loops need to go all the way around. There can't be any that just end on a on an edge, like say right here.